Hello, and welcome to Van Black Law. Van Dievener Black is a business and litigation law firm providing internationally recognized services across a wide variety of legal sectors. Thank you for tuning in today to Van Black Law's Technology Roundup, where we discuss the latest issues affecting your business. I'm Jonathan Gallo, and I'm part of Van Black Law's Cybersecurity and Data Privacy Group. Today, we're going to discuss some of the major provisions of Virginia's recently passed Consumer Data Protection Act. The penalties in this act can be quite severe. A business can be fined up to $7,500 per violation. So stay tuned to determine if this act may apply to your business. But before we get into today's topic, if you like the content we provide on our channel, please take a moment and click on the subscribe button below this video so we can continue to bring you the latest and cutting edge content on this and other technology related issues. And be sure to check out our other videos on the channel. So now let's discuss some of the major provisions of Virginia's Consumer Data Protection Act. The law was approved by Governor Northam this past March, and it applies to the personal data of Virginia residents. It's similar to California's data protection law, as well as the European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, otherwise known as the GDPR. However, Virginia's law does not come into effect until January 1st, 2023. So let's talk about who's covered by the law. The law covers natural or legal persons who conduct business in Virginia or natural or legal persons that produce products or services targeted to Virginia residents, and they control or process the personal data of 100,000 or more consumers, or control or process the personal data of 25,000 or more consumers, and derive over 50% of their gross profits from the sale of personal data. We're going to talk about what some of, the, some of these terms mean in a minute, but let's talk about what entities it doesn't include. If you see this list, you'll notice that there's a number of entities that are not covered by the law. Many of those entities are Virginia, uh, Commonwealth of Virginia subdivisions, authorities and bureaus, governmental agencies. It also doesn't apply to financial institutions covered by the Graham Leach Bliley Act, doesn't cover any entities that are controlled under HIPAA or the High Tech Act, and it also doesn't apply to nonprofit organizations or institutions of higher learning. So now let's talk about some of the terms that it does cover. You heard me reference before the personal data of consumers. What is a consumer under the law? Well, a consumer is very narrowly defined under the law. And a consumer is defined under the Virginia law as a natural person who is a resident of Virginia, but only when acting in the personal individual or household context. It doesn't apply to a person who's acting in a commercial or employment context. So this is different than California's law. In addition, it applies to personal data, which is any information that's linkable or reasonably linkable to an identified or identifiable natural person. So it doesn't include de-identified data and it doesn't include publicly available data. The law also creates a special category of personal data called sensitive data. And it includes data covering the characteristics that are listed here, such as ethnic origin, religious beliefs, mental or physical health diagnoses. It also includes the processing of genetic or biometric data for the purposes of uniquely identifying a natural person. It covers personal data collected by a known child and precise geolocation data. Now, there are some categories of data that are exempt under this law, and they are listed here. This is not a complete list, so you should look at the statute to learn what all of them are. However, it's basically data that's regulated by some other type of law, such as HIPAA or the Fair Credit Reporting Act. So these types of data are not covered by Virginia's law. Now let's talk a little bit about controllers and processors, which I mentioned earlier. Controllers and processors are defined pretty much the same way as they're defined under the GDPR. Controllers are natural or legal persons who determine the purpose and means for processing the data. And processors are natural or legal persons who process the data on behalf of the controller. So what's processing? Well, you can see the definition here. It's pretty much any operation or set of operations, either manual or automated, that are performed on any type of personal data. 
So that's things like analytics, deletion, storage, disclosure, use of the data. Anything that's done with personal data is considered processing. So if you're a business that performs any of these activities on personal data, you're a processor. And if you also control the purpose and the means for processing the data, you're a controller. Now the law creates certain responsibilities for controllers and processors. And you can see the list here of the controller's responsibilities. We won't go into all of them in detail, but a lot of them involve making sure that the controller limits their collection and processing of data to only what's reasonably necessary. It also requires controllers to implement reasonable security practices for their processing activities. It also requires, and I mentioned sensitive data before, that controllers cannot process sensitive data without consent of the consumer. It also requires controllers and processors to have written contracts that govern how the processing activities are to occur. And it requires those contracts to have certain contractual clauses. So review the law so you understand which clauses are required. And also importantly, it requires controllers to respond to consumer rights requests within 45 days. And finally, it also requires controllers to engage in data protection assessments governing their processing activities. It's important to understand that these data protection assessments can be requested by the Virginia Attorney General's Office. So it's important that businesses make sure that they are thorough and up to date. Now let's talk briefly about the obligations of processors. The processor's obligations are basically to help the controllers comply with the law. And those include consumer rights requests and also controllers responsibility under breach notifications under Virginia's breach notification law. And they also require processors to assist controllers in establishing data protection assessments. Now, let's get to the consumer's rights under the law. The consumer's rights under this law are pretty similar to those under the California law and the GDPR, and they're listed here. They include the consumer's right to know what data is being processed about them and the right to access it, the right to correct data that's erroneously collected, and the right to have data transferred to them which is called data portability, so that they can transfer it to another uh, controller or processor. They also have the right to have their data deleted, and they also have the right to appeal any denial by a controller of a consumer rights request. Now, it's important to understand, as I said before, controllers have to respond to a consumer rights request within 45 days. They can take an additional 45 days under the statute as long as they notify the consumer that they're going to do so within the first 45 days. Now, consumers also have other rights as well, specifically with regard to the sale of their personal data and opting out. Consumers have the right to opt out of the collection and processing of their personal data if it's gonna be processed for targeted advertising or profiling or for sale. Now, what is sale under the Virginia law? Virginia also defines sale very narrowly as compared with California's law. Under Virginia law, sale is the transfer of personal data for monetary consideration to a third party. It has to be transfer for monetary consideration. A sale does not include a number of other types of transfers, which we have listed here. Now let's talk about enforcement of the law. It's important to understand that there is no private right of action under this law. Sole enforcement authority is under the Virginia Attorney General's Office. Now if the Virginia Attorney General's Office believes that an entity has, is, or is about to commit a violation of the act, it can investigate using what's called a civil investigative demand, which is a very powerful investigative tool which allows the Attorney General's Office to get information from a business regarding its collection and processing practices. The law also contains what's known as a 30-day notice to cure provision, which means if the Virginia Attorney General's Office notifies a business that they believe a violation has occurred, that business has 30 days to correct the violation and provide notice to the Attorney General's office in writing that it's been corrected and that the business will, will not engage in any further violations. If the business complies, then the Virginia Attorney General's office will not file a civil action. If it doesn't, or if the business makes a false statement in its written 
response, then the Virginia Attorney General's office can file a civil suit for enforcement. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this program, penalties can be severe, up to $7,500 per violation. In addition, the Virginia Attorney General's office can get reasonable attorney's fees and costs for the investigation reimbursed by the business. One more provision of this law is very important to remember. It requires the Virginia Joint Commission on Technology and Science to review the law's provisions and implementation and notify the legislature by November 1st of this year, which means the law could change before it's implemented. Well, there you have it. Virginia's new Consumer Data Protection Act, which goes into effect January 1st, 2023. That's less than two years away, so businesses should start preparing now. We'll be following this and other legislation closely on technology-related issues. So thank you for watching today. And again, please don't forget to subscribe, click on the notification bell, and like our videos. Have a great day.